Welcome ladies and gentlemen, PDAC 2019, it's day four and with me here is now Frank Holmes, you remember the famous, yeah, Frank Holmes, I would call the Chief Investment Officer of US Global and also Chairman of uh, Hive uh, Blockchain and uh, Crypto. And yeah, we want to talk about what's going on in the markets and of course something new about AI in the software for mining. Frank, welcome. It's great to be with you again. <laughs> yeah, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Maybe we uh, start first uh, about what's going on in the metal sector. So you just uh, told me something about the PMI we were talking last year about. So something has changed here, right? Last time you and I spoke, I was concerned about PMIs were peaking. And for your listeners, Purchasing Manufacturers Index is PMI. Mm -hmm. And it's forward looking. And it predicts commodities six months out. GDP is what's happened last month, last yeah. year. So it's better to be looking forward. So what our data mining analysis showed is that if the one month is above the three months, commodities start to rise. Mm -hmm. And if it stays above for three months in a row, incrementally rising, big push in all the commodities. When it falls below, slowdown happening six months out. Mm -hmm. So last April was the peak mm -hmm. and it slowly fell. And China fell below 50. That means contraction. The positive news now is that it impacted negatively the commodities last year. Mm -hmm. But the positive note is it looks like China's turning and they're bottoming because the Chinese started putting lots of money in January because they didn't like the December numbers. And that's what they've always done. So I think that uh, Trump will resolve something uh, just like he did with the NAFTA agreement. Uh, lots mm -hmm. of noise, lots of uh, chest beating, etc. But yeah. something will get resolved with China. Yeah. Now they're they're all pro business. Uh, they have so to. They will. Yeah. And uh, and then away we go. Uh, pick up in the commodity demand. Yeah. Was this maybe one of the reasons why copper went from let's say 265 now back to the 295 three dollar level? Yes. And also copper. There's no big mines coming on stream. Exactly. Exactly. There's nothing you and, and the big the big digital. Uh, data centers uh, for crypto mining, whatever it is, it's for Google, it's for Facebook, uh, uh, for artificial intelligence. They all need data centers. Then mm -hmm. you have all the uh, electrical cars. They all need copper, 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 copper. Mm -hmm. So it's very important uh, element. How do you think would e-mobility change as it's as, as a whole thing? The um, I would say the commodity scene, because to my understanding is uh, with e-mobility, it's not only that we build the car, but we need to build the whole infrastructure around. And so I have a little bit the feeling this will suck up a lot of more metals than we maybe first thought. Absolutely, uh, and and the metals aren't there, and it's really hard. They're so bearish on these commodities, but look at palladium. Mm -hmm. Palladium has slowly climbed. Oh, why is it 1500? Well, it's in deficit for three years. Right? Mm -hmm. It's in deficit. So I think we're going to see this deficit in many of the commodities. And then there will all of a sudden be a wake-up call that the prices are rising. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that copper is one of those. And one of my favorite specs, now, you know, it's tremendous optionality, is Gianni's company, Copper, copper, copper Bank. Bank. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Why? Because I can buy something for $0.08 cents Canadian yeah. with... Uh, 38 pounds of in situ copper per share. It's an option, I would it's, say. It's yeah. an optionality yeah. on copper. So yeah. copper goes back to four dollars. I think yeah. that goes to a dollar. Yeah. So I make this. So I own about ten percent of the company for that mm -hmm. reason. So I'm looking at those type of specs besides the Glencore, Glencore's up for copper plays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, you just told me also that you have a gold node like, right? Uh, pardon me? You have a gold note. Well, you know, one of the investments we have is a company called Grand Columbia. Mm -hmm. It's the largest gold producer in Colombia, mm -hmm. high grade. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a gold note, which yeah. I was involved with in the structuring. And uh, it's a very attractive piece of paper. It's in all my funds. Uh, it pays monthly, which I really like. That's discipline. Uh, it's eight and a quarter minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, gold at twelve fifty. anything above, they pay more. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's listed on Toronto, the Grand Columbia Gold Notes, mm -hmm. and the yield's 10%. Where can you get like a money market yield on bullion paying mm -hmm. you 10%? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And gold goes in 1900, the yield doubles and triples. Yeah, so yeah. I think that, that I like that in a portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's up to diversify. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, 
artificial intelligence. That's the new world. That's the future of everything. It looks like to me. You have also something really special here. Um, you told me already. I think it's something which has to deal yeah, with mining and how you discover in the future probably exploration sites. Right? I'm so blessed. Yeah. I'm really, really blessed to meet young minds and young brains. Mm -hmm. uh, Goldspot has nine PhDs. 11 other uh, technical uh, scientists, mm -hmm. a total of a team of 20. Mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, very active in, in uh, taking data and reassessing data. So if you are a gifted athlete or a gifted person in architect, you can rotate things in your brain three-dimensionally. Mm -hmm. But most geologists can't look more than four maps. Mm -hmm. They can do 50. So it's a brand new way of interpreting and Eric Sprott owns 10% uh, of the company. Mm -hmm. Elliot Management through uh, Triple Flags bought 10% of the company. Mm -hmm. Hothschild, mm -hmm. myself, I went on as chairman, bought 10%. So we're all big believers in this new vision and they've shown positive results. So it's mm -hmm. a profitable business. So it's the first true pure AI company to go public. Mm -hmm, crazy. Can you elaborate a little bit more how they do it or what's, let's say, not a secret behind, but how we does it work? So what happens is that, like I mentioned, that you can have four different types of, of interpretations of, of landscape. Mm -hmm. You can have from a satellite photo imaging, someone looking for electromagnetic, you can have uh, soil samples. Uh, we can go on with all these type of geological testing. They can combine them all and see them all where a geologist can't overlay mm -hmm. more than four. They can do 50. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it eliminates, what it does is it de-risks a lot of wasted exploration. Yeah. Even the stories, we got that Amazing. greatest piece of moose pasture, yeah. but nothing, they didn't discover anything, they blow $5 million. Yeah. Well, this is going to be much more efficient use of uh -huh. capital with a proven track record. But I think that these guys are on something very big and gold spots uh, will take juniors and they'll say, we'll invest in you, but where you have to use our analysis for where you drill, and uh, we get a royalty on the assets. Mm -hmm. So there's a discovery, they get all the royalty upside. Okay. Uh, they also have a share position. Yeah. So it's a unique way of having 20 really smart people yeah. looking at a, a young geologist uh, deposit. Wow. And uh, so uh, a new company is going to be called New Gold, New, New Found <laughs> Gold. Uh, they did all the data, all the public data mm -hmm. in Iceland, mm -hmm. all the public data in Newfoundland, all the public mm -hmm. data that's in Quebec. And then they spent a million dollars cleaning the data, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they know where to go. Mm -hmm. So it's not about companies coming to us looking for money. It's about us knocking on their door and say, we would like to do business with you. Mm -hmm. So that's a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very excited. Very excited. I believe that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I go to a function, yeah. uh, they're for an opening function, yeah. and I'm the, I, I'm the oldest guy in the room. Then I go to another function mm -hmm. uh, the bankers are putting on, and now I'm the youngest guy in the room. Yeah. Guess what? You know, I like being uh, adult supervision. I like being that young, young minds are invigorating my brain. Yeah. And I have to think, how do they look at things? So it's good for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I think it's also something like of um, um, security aspect, because on the one hand you can say, okay, we put money in, we get a royalty, but on the other hand they cannot cheat you. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. So, so I, I think uh, it's, a, it's a brand new world. Yeah. And it also attracts millennial investors. Mm -hmm. Millennials aren't interested in buying a junior exploration, speculating on that. Mm. But if it's AI, if it's a quant approach. Yeah, it's hot. You know what? I'll, yeah. I'll trust that more yeah. than someone saying, I've got some nice, cool maps for yeah. you to look at. Yeah, absolutely. So Spot is the ticker. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very thrilled and I'm honored to be with all these young, brilliant minds. Yeah, super. And the other part to share with you is Montreal. Montreal is becoming an, I didn't know this, an epic center, an epicenter for all these brains. So they don't want to leave. Uh, all these PhDs that are n know about AI, And it, was, it comes from one professor, Israeli professor, sort of created this sort of big uh, mm -hmm. community so that Microsoft is opening a campus, 5,000 people they're going to hire. So they, mm -hmm. well, they don't want to move to Seattle. They don't want to move to Silicon Valley. They don't want to move to New York. So there's something really big happening in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So I find it all thrilling. Oh, great. Last question. What's your pick on uranium? Uranium still doesn't have the pivot yet. You know, I... Um, I think you're going to have to have a higher energy prices sustainable. Uh, it's like when oil rises, all of a sudden, you know, natural 
coal starts to rise more in sympathy with the oil, and then uranium prices start to rise. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're going to have uh, some sh any type of supply shock to the uranium market uh, will then all of a sudden get that pivot move. Mm -hmm. uh, we find that the institutions retail all follow this 50-day moving average. It's like, okay, we're more bullish if it's above it, and now we're cautious if it's below it. So mm -hmm. we have to get that above the 50-day moving average and hold above that, and I think you'll see more enthusiasm coming to the uranium stocks. Okay, super. Well, great, Frank. That was a great update. Thank you very much. And yeah, wish you all the best with your AI company. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> super. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Frank Holmes, the Chief Investment Officer of uh, US Global. And yeah, you heard it. Uh, it looks like that we have had the bottom uh, in the yeah in the commodities. I would call it the PMI is turning and up to turn. And uh, so from that perspective, it looks much much better on the commodities side. So we keep our fingers crossed for that too. Thanks and bye-bye from Toronto.